Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> where are we all at? You disappeared there. I don't know where you were. I thought you were away celebrating England's triumph. England won the World Cup about eight times there. A couple of times they won the European jump, and I think Polo, Snooker, and Pool World Championships all won at once there. <laughs> so, if you listen to the commentators, Paul or Ah, uh, lethal. Now we have Jarrett Watson and Michael McKeown joining us tonight. And uh, why are they joining us, Marty? Well, this week we've done things a little bit different this week because we had to bring on two very special guests. Because there's been a, a, a marriage, a marriage between, the, I, I like to call them the Lazarus brand. So all these guys back from the grave, we have Dunfels, we have O'Cumber back again, and now Matt Darcy. And they've all become harmonious, uh, harmonious unity. That's a good way of putting it. I thought you were going to say humongous. Well, <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Michael, Jarlath, how are we guys? Best. Oh, all good morning, Justin. All good. Excellent. Now, I was looking through, scrolling through Facebook and social media this week, and up pops that there's a partnership has been formed. And uh, I thought it would be interesting to come on, you guys fill us in on a bit more of the details, because it's, it's a little bit of a, of, of a funnier one. It's not like somebody has just taken over and bought the thing, and it's... You know, so what's 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 what happened, or how'd this come about? Well, I was the I was the needy one. <laughs> you were. <laughs> I don't, th Michael. I don't think that's ever been the case, mate. I don't think that's ever been the case. <laughs> I, I spent the last. Uh, it actually worked out. I had been working for a year after being thought I was retired, and this time of last year, I had to start all over again. But um, I've been working for that year, and one of the things I discovered is. It's going to be damned hard for anybody uh, to get themselves recognized and spotted in the market. And I don't mean by your efforts of publicity or otherwise, but when you get into the mechanics of it, yeah, it's very difficult to have a small operation meeting the logistical needs. And one of the problems that we were running into over the last year was is bottling, to find somebody to bottle now, that might be cured shortly if these people in Dundalk get off the ground or whatever, but um, the first thing is you need to find bottling, and you're not going to put in your own bottling plant. You're going, you're going to go around cap in hand begging people to bottle for you. Yeah. And um, We were moving into a phase of where uh, we could, we had prospective large orders coming, and my big concern was just, what are we going to do? Who's going to bottle this? <laughs> and the next thing why he says, Yes, everybody small is going to be very needy. We um we got interest uh, uh, an outlet in the in the US, and then I started to realise that just just to maintain your presence in the US, not to send anything, not to do anything, but it was going to cost you between two and five thousand quid a month to keep a connection with an importer, and yeah. that's before you did any marketing, whatever. And I thought, hold on a minute here. There must be economies of scale here. Somebody who already has these could help to get somebody else in. And that all depend just on one 5,000 a month or 10,000 a month, whatever it happens to be, between them. But you couldn't go with a small brand and expect to be make any profit if you were paying all these fixed costs. Then you're into the warehousing costs. Then you're into more... <laughs> And you find the same thing in each country you go to. So I had in my head that I would, well, I had in my head was I wasn't going to succeed if I couldn't find a way of getting into some sort of larger entity. And um, that's where part of my, it went to. The other thing was that I realized that um, we were bottling, last year we bought a 17 year old. And uh, when I looked at the stock, we have enough to put out 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old, 21-year-old, 22-year-old, 23-year-old, 24-year-old, 25-year-old, and 35-year-old whiskey. And I said, hold on a minute, I'd definitely be dead before all that's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that led to real, realize I needed to offload some of this stock. And, and 
So what you did was you looked across and saw some guys that have trailblazed in front of you, maybe. Well, one of the things that, looking back now, I realised was that I didn't... I actually started the chat with, with Jareth about, about taking some of the older stock from us. But I got very surprised. Um, the first day we went to meet Shane Brown, if I'd never met him before, I'd heard of him, but I'd never met him. But Jareth arranged for us to meet uh, Shane Brown. And I can tell you what date it was. It was the 20... <laughs> It was the 28th of the 4th. And the reason I can tell you is, is this is the signed bottle. The handshake deal. Absolutely. That's the agreement just there. <laughs> signed across the back of the label, Shane Brown of Michael McKeown. And uh, is, that, is that the contract, is it? That's the contract there. <laughs> and that was the contract before that Jarvis fella got involved. <laughs> 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 I tell you honestly, I, I, it heartened me no end to see to see this tie up because it's it's nice that small small guys helping each other out. You know that, that, that's that's what it should be all about. And I'm not saying I'm not saying anybody's small, but I mean in comparison, I, I, I'm going to put the hands up and say we're small. Jarlath, Jar is this the start of consolidation in the sort of county down whiskey industry then? I, I don't know how, well I mean, I, how do you know what there's going to be consolidation in the, in the industry that's for sure do you know I mean maybe um, absolutely maybe this one happened a bit sooner than we thought that we'd be that we'd be consolidating with anybody but um like Michael says we got on to a call start of April halfway through April led to a few meetings and it started off about something else it started off about eight stocks and the more we talk Oh. There's a different plan, you know, and the plan was that you know we bring back Darcy's into the Actonville fold. It suits our portfolio, you know. Shane's mad for collecting old brands, you know. So yeah. it's just, you know, and it it's, gives so, us it's funny because I know another boy that's something similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it Down in Yuri. Yeah, it, it gives that lovely trinity now in Actonville of um of Dunville's old Trumber and Matt Darcy's. Yeah. And it's one that I know that can slot into our portfolio. You know, the liquid is good in the bottle, you know, and that's that's first. I mean, it's a good brand. Mm -hmm. The liquid in the bottle is good. And if you've got those two fundamentals, you know, <laughs> you've got the basis of something that's going to work. And, and that's what we have, you know. And I think it, it sits it sits well with Dunville's and Old Trumber. It's a slightly different animal again, you know, it'll be a different liquid profile, different finish profile. We've yet to get the finer details of that, you know, but we know we can do it. And like I say, Michael's done a great job, you know, with the with the brand to date. You know, it's a hard one. I mean, if you weren't a certain size before COVID struck, it's hard to go over that hump, you know, because yeah. you can't get meetings, you can't travel. It's even hard getting liquid on lips. You can't do physical tastings, you know. There's yeah. only so much you can stress online. So, you know, it's a hard position to be in. Um, I know that we can, you know, that we're working, to, working together, we can do stuff with it. Because, like I say, the fundamentals are in place. You've got a great brand and you've got great liquid. And everything else, you know, is just hard work then, you know. So, yeah, we're, I mean, personally, we're, I think that's enough for us now. You know, I think if we've done those, if we've done so. those, Things have moved quite rapidly for you in the yeah. last couple of, you know, last month or two. In the last year, I mean, it was about five weeks ago we were talking about old Trumber, and yeah. um, I knew this. Was, I knew that this was in the background, but do you know what? Nothing's done until it's done. No. Um, you know, so we were both very quiet about it because you know nothing's done until it's done. But now that it's done, just delighted. Do you know? Um, I mean, just yeah, just I think you know. It is a bit of consolidation, but it, it's it makes sense for both parties, you know. In this one, you know, I think it's it's a case where like good whiskey, both constituent parts, the the, the, the sum is stronger well, than the constituent parts, you know. And, and, and I think that's the basis of it. Well, the, well thing about, I, the thing about whiskey is whiskey is all about stories, and that, and you guys, <laughs> you I mean you guys, you guys both, all I mean Shane and and Jonathan and yeah. Michael. I mean, you just, you just have taken that old story and carried it forward to today, but now you're kind of making a brand new story out of it, and and it is a little bit this partnership because it's it's an interesting thing that you've done because it's not a takeover. Michael hasn't totally abandoned it to say I'm away. You know, there's a bit of different dynamics there. What could you explain that to the guys? 
Well, well, probably as much as we can. You know, I mean, um, there's there's a acting filter so for the the production, um, the the whole production side of it, and the brand as a partnership. You know, so we, we work together on on the branding, on the mark, on, on the on the marketing, and the on the especially distribution. On the, on the distribution, especially on the international side, but if Michael does bring contacts, do you know what I mean? He, he says, you know, Michael brings more contacts than he lets on, um, do you know, so there, <laughs> there's um, there's going to be a bit of consolidation there or not. But yeah, I mean, obviously it makes sense to bring all the production bottling, packaging and distribution, et cetera, et cetera, down to Actonville. Yeah. Um, that's what we do. That's one thing we do, do you know, um, we, 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 if, and if a brand that needs a revamp, we can get Mark Thompson on that. You know, Mark just loves working with these old um, historic brands, as you know, Marty. And it yeah. does, does an absolutely fantastic oh, job with, you know, with Shane. So I think I think the first time you get Shane, Mark, and Michael in the room is going to be an interesting <laughs> morning. <laughs> well, the, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you know, I've always said the labelling, the labelling on Dunvalls is just fabulous. It's just always been head and shoulders it's just superb and uh what, what michael comes up stuff out of the book and comes out with the labels and mark gets his interpretations on them it'll be it'll be beautiful to see it really yeah, will be. And, mark, and mark and shane and, and michael too they're, they're all very sympathetic to the old branding and to the old and you know they it, it's it's very very small tweaks it's very very small modernizations yeah. but it's still very much i mean that dundall's label is still very true to the label from the eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties, you know, but before that, and I think that's the, uh, you know, that 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 that's the key to it. You know, don't yeah. if it's not broke, don't change it. No, I, I, I mean, I've, I've told you a hundred times before, the labeling's just just out of this world. But Michael, yes, you're you're in some ways you're handing over a little bit of your, you know, the flame over the other guys to move on. But I mean, you haven't. You haven't given it up completely. Your the the story and stuff's going to be. Yeah, well, the first thing I, I know I'm not describing it right, but I feel that I have dumped all <laughs> the dumpy work. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, all, this last year, and I'm not sure how any of the smaller people, some of them must enjoy it. And if I was forty years younger, as I was fifty when I was fifty years younger. <laughs> I was bottling and labelling and stemming stuff out in lorries. For the last year, I've been doing that and supervising accounts. All yeah. of it. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be really insulting the, the, the Jared here. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell the story. Do you know about dollar time and penny tasks? No, if, if, if somebody else can do something for a ten or an hour, but you could earn a hundred pound an hour, oh God, say give them all the <laughs> give them all the work they can get. <laughs> So that you can go on and do something else at a hundred pound an hour. No but way. All of those tasks that Dunville, so I'm calling them Dunville now, Eckenville, at Eckenville have already got well in place. Bookkeeping systems, bond stores, bond records, all that stuff is uh, what you might call non-creative, and that's what they already have. Yeah. But they also, they also had Shane sitting there. Thinking out, what are we going to do next? And yeah. uh, one of the things I have an awful thing to say in the airwave, but against both of us, but I said this to Shane the other day in a conversation. I have never been able to read anybody in my life. You know, people say, oh, I could read him. I could read him. I have never been able to read anybody. But the day I met him, I could read him. Yeah. And I realized after a bit, was it, Do you know what? He's as mad as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a, I think there's, a, there's a good synergy going on there because the, the and, both and, of you yeah, both, both of you have a real passion for this kind for the historic I, stuff. Both of us have the same problem, mm -hmm. which he didn't admit was a problem, but because he was very loyal. I says we have got the same problem, and he says what's that? I says Shane anchors. People like Jareth are bloody anchors. Remind us of our responsibilities and the cost of things and how much it'll cost to do this. And if they weren't here, we could do anything we wanted. <laughs> You'd be one of the boys JFB sauce would be taking me to the moon. <laughs> you know. But no, the thing is, I, I talked to Jarlath earlier about, about this. Um and it, it really does have a feel that 
both parties really benefit from this. It's not, you know, it's a nice partnership and a, and a progression, helping mm. each other out. And, you know, those guys look after that bit, you keep your hand doing this bit. And it just seems like a really nice, natural sort of tie up. You know, it's, it's a nice thing. We've had a couple of questions in, uh, Michael and Jarrath. Uh, Robert Gustafson's asked, uh, Jarrath particularly, with such a big portfolio, are there any plans for moving uh, more into the EU and beyond the Republic of Ireland? Uh, short answer, yes. Um, short answer, yes. We, um, we're we re-engaging with our distributors in Germany, Holland. For, we are appointing uh, new guys in different markets. So I think, and obviously Stephen McGuinness has come on board with us last October and um, him and Suzanne and Claire are really um, taking the game forward. So yeah, I think that by, um, where are we at now? We're in June, yeah, by September, you're gonna see the products relaunched in Germany, France, Italy, Holland, Belgium, Switzerland, um, and hopefully Scandinavian countries as well. Um, separate to that, then we're looking at South Africa and China as the next two markets um, that we're working on. And obviously, America, Canada, etc. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of movement, a lot of movement. Um, anywhere in particular, just let us know um, <laughs> that, that you want it. Um, but I think I think he's in Scandinavia. Yeah. Robert Gustafsson is he Sweden or, or Sweden? Sweden, Sweden. Sweden. He's, he is in Sweden. Yes, he is. And, and listen, Michael, you, you've got a question here, particularly for your, for you. Seamus Tobin is asking, have you driven any of his tanks yet, Michael? <laughs> any Seamus tanks? <laughs> No, I am a, a pacifist. Right? <laughs> You're a pacifist. No, I don't believe that for a second, Michael. <laughs> for one second, I believe that. I can see you and Shane and Convoy just going up Great Victoria Street. <laughs> it was actually my third visit to, to them before I noticed the tank. Uh, and I just, I was, what's that over there? <laughs> you, you were that used to the streets of Belfast in the 1970s. <laughs> and then they decided not to mention it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now there's another question has come in there too. I just thought you know, it was Graham Horner. Oh, I can't see. Oh, I can see that. And yes, any 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 word in the next batch of old Cumber Marty? Yes. Uh, oh, don't yeah, ask me. Graham. I know nothing about it. <laughs> Marty, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Graham. Um, there's another um, three to four hundred bottles going out. I'm going to say June, but June's over, so early July. We're, we're just waiting on, on labels that, we sh that should have been here a month ago. And then I think there'll be a further three cast, probably a thousand bottle run, maybe about November, December time. It's a work in progress, as we know. You know, we had to, um, it's a two year plan, three year plan, really. 2024 is the 200th anniversary of Old Trumber. Um, and, I hope we, and we hope to hit the seven year old core product by, by then. Um, but we're just going to work up to it for the next couple of years with sporadic releases. But yeah, a, a few hundred bottles in July and maybe a thousand in December. But it, it's going to be like that for two years before we get to a core product. Yeah, it, uh, it's a great start. It's a great start. It's, 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 I, you know, it's a great yeah, whiskey. I, it really is. But and like I say, it's a different story. So you have the you, know, the, you have that pot still story and double distilled pot still story. Yeah. With a trumber with with Dunville's, you just have that sherry bomb and, and big sherry finishes. And then with, with Matt Darcy, if we can do something with a bit more a lighter touch or a more deft touch, do you know, yeah. to the finishing, do you know, um, which is what Matt Darcy has done well to date. So I think, you know, that's where the three will, will play yeah. with each other. Now, Michael, the, yeah. the actual distillery, I mean, the last time I spoke to you, you were talking about getting the distillery, getting the bar up and running. And yes. that. Is there any more progress with that? Or where are we at with that? Well, we're still waiting on building control to give us the final approval. Um, we have tender documents that set that already, but we can't put them out to anybody in case building control says, no, that steel should be thicker. Or that. But it, it, it came about, um, when I spoke to you, it was like maybe in the autumn or early part of the year. Mm -hmm. We had just acquired an, a, a, an acre beside where we were. Yeah. But alongside that, we had the, at the beginning of COVID, we'd taken a look at the economics um, of the operation and brought in a couple of uh, um, consultant types. And it turned out that the whole layout was actually reducing 
the potential. So I had to do a rejigging of the layout. Then the rejigging of the layout brought me back into new fire controls. New fire controls brought me back into new building controls. Right, just just a, a domino effect. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I also think we're darn lucky we weren't trying to get it open in the middle of COVID. Right. <laughs> exactly. So that yeah. uh, it's been a blessed thing uh, to miss that. So we're waiting now. I thought it actually should be in by the end of June, the building control, but it hasn't been finalized yet. When that happens, then we go back out to, to, uh, with proper document documents for tenders. Then we progress. So that's my, my, my next thing is, um, and a wee bit like what I just said there, I don't like the penny tasks. I don't like having to do things every day of the week. So <laughs> I'm with you can get somebody else to take up penny tasks. Absolutely. Right. So Absolutely. that's where we're at with that. Yeah, so the plans have changed significantly, but not that significantly. So it's still all, you're still going to be the, 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 the force behind it, shall we say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. And well, listen, it's it's been really I, lovely having I, you until, both on. Yep. Until I find another boy like Shane Branagh, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm showing the set of plans, and he writes his name across the plans. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, honestly, I saw this during the week, and I, I thought to myself, it's just a great tie-up, great guys, um, and a nice. It's, it just seems like a nice way of doing things, a sort of gentleman's agreement. And I'm glad glad I got to see a signature in the back of a whiskey bottle as a thing. Now Jarlath Dunvals, keep it going. Old Cumber, you've done a, a sterling work you start off with. Okay, it's a work in progress, but it's fabulous foundations. And now you've got Matt Darcy who who's a ten year old podcast great stuff mm -hmm. and the seventeen year olds great as well. <laughs> out of this world so um yeah guys well done and more part two and we'll hope to catch up with you again very shortly yeah marty justin always a pleasure have a good evening we'll Indeed, try our really. best Make right. Right. Part two. take care guys bye bye, bye michael bye thanks bye. boys bye. bye 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 oh what a what, what a wonderful crowd tonight again uh marty what a wonderful uh, crowd tonight absolutely again funny. You, you know but, uh, it goes from strength to strength the irish uh, whiskey industry doesn't it it does, and and the thing about it is, it's it's small. It's it, you know, it's <laughs> I'm going to do a wee story here in a, in a in a wee minute or two about about the uh, about global whiskey sales and so on and so forth. And it's not a big industry, but Pe when you get guys guys doing stuff like this and moving forward and right, how do we help each other out and so on? Yeah, there's so, James yeah. Murray Doherty saying congratulations, Jonathan and Michael, great tie up. I mean, it was. I mean, it was. Absolutely. That's a great endorsement. It is. It's a fantastic it endorsement. Is. I'm getting endorsed tonight too, Marty. At Brim Lem says, Justin, been on the sunbeds. <laughs> well, Justin and I were actually up in Belfast today. Uh, <laughs> we, got bought, we got bought our lunch. It was rather nice it was too. And uh, we had a wee sort of thunder about. And we, we ended up, we found ourselves uh, walking down the Shangle Road just after a, a bomb parade. They, they see a couple of things up there. Um, yeah, it was it was a good old day. I, I got a wee touch of sun as well, but obviously not as shiny as Justin. I know. I have the makeup girl. She puts the makeup on just before <laughs> There you go. Listen, uh, remember to comment, like, and share. Uh, if you haven't already, do subscribe on YouTube. Remember, we're on Instagram. We're on LinkedIn as well. We're being asked there, uh, by somebody, any word on the uh, day out? It's, it's still up in the air because not yeah. everywhere is open yet, Mark. Not everywhere is open. We might get a wee scout out and see if we might do a wee scout out this week. Uh, it's kind of hard, guys, because the COVID regulations still state how many people, and if you're going to take a mini bus, it's only so many allowed in that. I mean, I, I was working on Thursday with a group of a cruise ship, full size coach, you're only allowed, it was a 53 seater, and maximum you're allowed was 24 people on the coach. So, and you're not allowed to talk or sit with each other. No, well, I had, I have to wear, I'd done two full tours four hour tours and I had to have a mask on the whole time because it's and I had to have a um a PCR test in the morning and so on and so forth. So just at the minute it's I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardise any any tour out and we want to take as many people as possible and have have uh, that. So just at the minute, sorry guys, but 
unfortunately, that's just the way of the world at the moment, you know. Yes. There you go. Uh, and then there's uh, Robert Gustafson saying he's on the, the Belichian pitching tonight. Uh, that's something that, that's what he's saying. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, no, we well, might, we may go, be, be going to the pitching factory. Oh, we may be. But we also, I also had a little taste of the smoky pitching this week. Mm. Mm. Like, right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like, the, like the sound of that. There we you do. Go. We do. Now, carrying on with the news, the the Charlotte and Michael, we've got all um, the news from them. Last week, we had an interview with Joe Hyman from Skinner's Auction Inc. about the uh, Old Dingle Jew whiskey. Now, the estimate for it was between 30 and 40. Anybody who didn't see the show last week, it's a bottle. it was bottled in the 1860s. It was owned by J.P. Morgan. My God. And it was carbon dated. There were liquid in it to the late 1700s. It was estimate, our estimate was 40,000. And it went for $137,500. Yeah. Now, including auction fees, that's going to be around $170,000, between $160,000 $170,000 for that bottle. And it's reckoned to be the oldest whiskey in existence. No one. Um, it's a fabulous story. Just a great story. Uh, and I would, I would imagine you'll see that popping up at a museum somewhere. I can't see that going to a hotel or even a private collection. Uh, 100, 170000 goes to show you lots of people are investing in this stuff and, and the museum quality stuff too. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, it's not bad. <laughs> There's a couple other really nice bottles in that auction. I can't do watch it. Uh, but I, I still think the likes of, you know, these old bottles of the peach brandy from California from 1900, I mean, you have to remember, California wasn't that old, long near a, a steer at that point. Well, you know, it wasn't that long populated, and might not taste the best. But you're that's that's a, a proper piece of history that you would have there. And they were selling them for a couple hundred dollars. But let's be honest, it's not a huge amount of money. Right. Uh, what's next yeah. tonight, Marty? Where we're we heading? Well, there's there's a couple of reports out this week that uh, are, are really quite. Interesting. And one was the Irish Whiskey Global Report. Irish Whiskey Global. And that was from the Irish Whiskey Association, compiled by the head of the association, William Lavelle, uh, with the support from the International Trade Committee. Now, it's full of facts and stats about various bits and things. You know, top 20 sales markets for Irish whiskey. Number one, USA. Number two, Ireland, a domestic market. Number three, Russia. Four, the UK. And five, Germany. Now, Germany drunk 436,000 nine litre cases. Uh, and, and, but the 20th biggest was Latvia <laughs> with 20,000. Now, India is not even in the top 20, but Irish whiskey is in the discussions between the, the UK uh, and India for the free trade talks. So, that would, Northern Ireland being slightly different than everywhere else, you would have. Uh, the likes of Eggman Fallon, these guys, with potentially getting access to the, the biggest whiskey market in the world. So there's there's lots of really interesting things. Now, Irish whiskey's benefiting from the EU-Canada deal with with Writer's Tears. Um, I should have had a bottle of Writer's Tears up here because it is great whiskey. I love it. I think it's just very, very underrated in many ways. But they saw an increase of 84%. Uh, you know, I mean, these kind of figures are are colossal, you know. Um, when you're getting an e four percent increase in sales, even if that's a small amount, it's still huge and, and great building blocks for everybody else. Uh, the now, future certainly looks rosy for it, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, well, it, it, is it, it going does. to surpass Scotland in, in the ten years? Then, because Scotland seems to not be resting on its laurels anymore. No, I don't. Put like this. But, We've both seen that figure. It's been talked about a few times in the show. Ireland's got a long way to go, and I'll prove that with later on. Now, the Irish Whiskey Association is trying to look at a reduction and removal of levies on spirits in southern African nations, Colombia, South Korea, Vietnam. Um, they've pushed for bonded warehousing in Kenya, try and combat the illegal trade in Jordan, Hong Kong, Nigeria, Turkey. 
It's got 46 members, this organisation. And lots of the big players there. You know, Brown Foreman, Irish Distillers, all these guys. And Eglin Villa there as well. And some of the, and a lot of the smaller ones. But it's, it's a nice tie-up. You know, it's it's good that these the smaller guys are also part of the association and having having a say, I'm sure. Um, with that, the 46 members are having discussions on a very high level uh, overseeing the industry. It said 11.4 million cases sold. Now, that's the entire industry, essentially, in 2020. It's it's not huge. It's by any stretch of the imagination because the Spirits Business website released its brand champions report. Now, this report lists the 150 best-selling spirits in the world, uh, vodka, tequila, whiskey, ready to drink stuff, etc., etc. Okay, the best selling Irish whiskey, as we know, Jameson is 28th on the list. 28th, right? Wow. Yep, yeah. Tullamore Dew. Now, there's only two Irish whiskies named in this. In the top 150 spirits, there's only two Irish whiskies, and Tullamore Dew is second with 136th place. Okay, you know. Whenever you were doing the, remember the old top 40 on a Sunday night, you know, you would barely get a mention in any of the Irish whiskey ones, but barely get a mention by, by Bruno Brooks. The best selling spirit in the world is Jinru Sochu. Okay. Right. Is this mm. it here? That's it. That's the best selling spirit in the world. How many cases of that do you think was sold? Mm, now, a billion, a billion, a billion. No, no, don't be. No, a billion nine liter cases. Oh, nine, no. right? Uh, nine billion liters. No, don't be. Two hundred, two hundred million. Don't, don't, hang on, hang on, Justin. The entire Irish whiskey industry. So Irish distillers, Bushmills, Tullamore, um, West Cork, Walsh Distillery, all of those combined sold eleven point four million cases. That sold. 95.3. That's one brand. Right? So almost heading towards 100 million 9 litre cases. 900 so, million litres. So that's that's a, that's a, a tenth of a billion, is it? Yeah. Now, that's, that's twice. That's twice what, what is number two sold. Number two was a bit of a strange one because in 2016 they sold 300,000 9 litre cases of this stuff. 2019, they sold 24.4 million cases, and last year saw an increase of 140%. That was lockdown, did that, but wasn't it? That was up to 58.5. That's that white claw hard seltzer stuff. So, white claw hard seltzer is now the second best selling spirit in the world, ready to drink tents. Is this why Cologne's bought out these seltzers then? Because it's, I'm going to it's, say yes. It's it's think. Um, that, that's one brand, mate. That's one brand. That's not the whole ready to drink market. That's one brand. It's now selling fifty four million have you ever, pieces of this. Have you ever tried that white claw? No. Would you ever want to try it? No, I, I, I would. Try, I would try it absolutely, but I'm um, well. I don't know. I'll give it a word. Sure, we'll try. I have a colour one here as well, and we'll give it a wee word and see what I think after <laughs> after we've yeah. finished this. Yeah. Uh, now, top ten on that list. So four whiskies, all of them Indian, all of them Indian. Uh, Madol's number t- number one. Madol's number one. Twenty five point seven million cases. That's just incredible figures. Do I have a picture for that one, do you? You should do. I think I do. You yeah. do indeed. There I do. There I do. Best selling whiskey in the world now. Classy looking bottle. Nice design. Probably looks, looks probably Scottish. not great, but it's like this. That bottle, that one brand has sold twice what the entire Irish whiskey industry sold. Would that be a would, would that be a real whiskey by Irish standards? Um debatable. I would probably, yes, it probably wouldn't be aged long enough, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Indian whiskey's aged really, really quickly. But there's a few other interesting facts as well. John, Johnny Walker slumped down to 14.1 million cases, which is a big drop for them. Um, 
Jack Daniels are down to 12.3 million cases, but in this, Jack Daniels makes four appearances because three of the things that are there are flavoured whiskies. So you have Jack Daniels is named four times in the uh, top 150. And when you look at it, there's lots of these ready to drink drinks appearing. There's a few flavoured whiskies coming in, a few flavoured spirits coming in. Uh, so it's 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 interesting. There's a big change sort of happening, big changes. But if Irish whiskey was taken as a whole, it would only be sitting at seventeenth in the in the spirits. Trade. Wow! So it would barely be making it into the top twenty, and that's all of Irish whiskey. So when people talk about there not being room for growth, or where do they get traction, and so on, I mean the spirits trade is just enormous. So if the Irish guys keep doing what they're doing, keep the quality up, keep you know bringing out good quality stuff, there's no reason in the world they can can grow, and they don't have to grow by massive percentages to, to really make a difference there, you know? No, no. Without a doubt, they don't. My, uh, what else we've got? Because this is like one big this week in whiskey this week. There's so much going on, isn't it? Well, it kind of is. Whenever we heard the news um, about the, the tie-up between that, we thought, well, we'll bring two old friends back in and, and get a yarn with them. But today is the 21st anniversary of the death of one of the truly great sportsman, one of the true gentlemen of uh, in history. Anybody, I defy anybody to tell me anything bad um, about Joey Dunlop, the, the legendary motorcycle motorcyclist from Armoy, from just up the road from me. Now, he's dead 21 years. Hard, to, might, believe. Hard to believe, Marty. Hard to believe. I don't think anybody from this part of the world will ever forget where they were when they found out he died. Now, he died in Estonia doing exactly what he loved doing, riding motorbikes. Um, play the wee clap about it, Joey, or Justin. Yeah, you were going to call me Joey there. I was going to call you Joey. I mean, how many times did he win the TT, Marty? 26. That's some going. It was great when you were able as a wee lad to sit and watch it like that. Now you have got to be further back than that, don't you? Uh, I, I remember being in the pit in class. Uh, I, I, get, I get into the pit media pass, you know, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. Look at that there. It's unreal. This is, I, this is legal in Ireland and the Isle of Man, by the way. The roads are closed. Oh. It's, it's, it's very stuff. Like, Johnny you know, Dunlop wins! That's the cut of 200 mile an hour there, isn't it? You know? Oh, easy. Oh. You know? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's uh, it, it's uh, unbelie unbelievable, Marty. Uh, unbelievable. If, if anybody doesn't know the story of these guys, watch a documentary narrated by Liam Neeson called Ride. Okay? It's, if, you, if you've never seen road racing before, you'll just you wonder how on earth these guys do it. Joey Dunlop won 26 Isle of Man TTs, 24 Rossler Grand Prix, 13 wins at the Northwest 200. I mean, you go through all the stuff that he's done, it's just incredible. Why is he on a whiskey show? Well, this you can buy in Joey's bar, okay? It's a blend of scotch, £25 a bottle, and it goes to the foundation. Now, the foundation is... We hope that you'll treasure and enjoy this unique collector's edition bottle of blended malt scotch created especially for the Joy the Lop Foundation to celebrate the third anniversary of the opening of Braddon Bridge House, 30 years since Joy's first TT win for Honda. Braddon House is a, a place on the Isle of Man, self-catering accommodation for people with disabilities. It's set up and designed to let people come across uh and, and enjoy the TT and enjoy motorbike riding, enjoy a wee holiday uh, and accommodation that's designed for people with disabilities. Now, Joey, when he was alive, to, get, to give you a, an idea of the man, he was a legend around here. I mean, he just was known the world over, really. But he used to just fill up a transit van with goods, with nappies and anything that people would donate. 
and set off in his van, drive to Romania and just rock up to an orphanage or a hospital and just unload the van. They had no idea who he was. He'd never tell he never really told them he was coming. This is in the days before sat navs, right? He just to just take over, leave the stuff there, sleep in the van. He used to just sleep in the van, drive back again. I know a guy who was in England looking to take him home and did a bit of, you know, the old thumb. You don't see it so much now because everybody <laughs> thinks you're a serial killer. But he used to hitchhike. Joey I, I don't have that up. problem. I'm the serial killer. <laughs> no, no, not really. Joey the Nut come down to pick them up. It turned out, you know, he was he lived not that far away. So Joey drove him all the way home. And he was just a gentleman, absolute gentleman. So if you're ever in that neck of the woods or you want to support a, a, a legend and a good cause, buy Joey the Nut, number three TT whiskey. Okay. Uh, a great quote is in there about Joey Dunlop, Marty. It's a fantastic one. It says, uh, best quote Joey ever <laughs> said, that there's a grey blur and a green blur, and I stay, try to stay on the grey on the grey one. <laughs> the most self-effacing, just a genius, but the most self-effacing, down to earth, easy-going guy. I, I, like half of Northern Ireland, went to his funeral, and it was just, just incredible. So emotional, so so moving. So if you ever get a chance, buy that there and support the foundation. No, uh, with about twenty minutes left tonight, there's a lot to get through still. Yeah, and uh, there's people like Frank Heron saying the Dunlap family have given so much; they have it uh, indeed. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, honestly, if you ha if, even if you don't care about motorbike racing or any of that kind of stuff, watch that documentary ride about the family, and. Just un unreal, unreal. Now, there's there's actual details of it there on screen there. That's a, a, a Internet Movie Database where you can get it, okay? Yeah. Now, Brona at the Stoke. Mm. There's only a week left. There's only a week left of the raffle to win 5% of the distillery. And the, the stock of the distillery has cranked up because Wise Oil Whiskey has... Just got 95%, 95 point on, uh, what do you call them? International Wine and Spirits Competition. 95 points gold award. And you can still win for a £20 ticket, a 5% share in her distillery. Yep, there's the full details that are on the screen. Uh, and sh sh she's going to do something special for us, isn't she? No, no, Justin, she's already done something special for us just by being on the show. She's going to do something special for our viewers. So we're going to do another competition. Competition time, guys. Uh, comment, like, or share on the this video, and you win my chance of winning a sample bottle being sent out, and we'll do an online tasting in a few weeks' time. Yes. A 100 milliliter bottle she's going to send out to 25 people. Obviously, me and Justin both got one each. Okay, so 23 winners I'll get their thing. So share, comment, like. I'll get in touch with you during the week and uh, we'll get these bottles sent out to people and in a couple of weeks' time we'll do a tasting. Yes, um, I've, after the 12th because obviously it's a public holiday here and there's no post for a couple of days. So Yeah, so it's a bit hard getting stuff across. But this is a really nice, very drinkable, very approachable, very easy, uh, quite complex uh, whiskey. Um and I quite like the brand on. I like that kind of art deco. I like wise oil, wise wise oil whiskey. Wow! But uh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There, it's good. It's, yeah. good, it's good. It's good. It always reminds me of the Late Late Show. Uh, the Stoke. They've also got a, a gin a gin school down there, which I think I think is reopening as well. That there you go. So there's only two weeks left. So uh, the link's on the screen there. That's how you get it. Click on that link. That'll take you through, and you can be in with a chance. There you go. Yeah. So as I say, comment on this. And uh, yeah, get on it and share it. And if your friends got in, we can get whiskey, a couple of samples sent out to people, etc. etc. And a couple of weeks' time, we'll get a, a uh, tasting done. Now, Brim Len is saying, Does comment on the YouTube enter me in the competition? It does, it does. Brim. It does, but it only applies in the UK and Ireland because obviously we can't post whiskey all around the world and some places you wouldn't get it anyway if we posted a, a sample so we uh, have, it's only uk and ireland we have sent stuff before and it's got intercepted you know so yeah and and it's a miracle you send over stuff in the post and for some reason the postal service in the us these guys they, they quite happily send over 
crisps and the others like but they, for some reason they don't take the whiskey it just seems to disappear into the uh the, the ether. Ether. Mm -hmm. it does it does mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. an un unreal but no congratulations to Bronan that down there uh well done for the, the the whiskey and the and the gold medal and yeah and fingers crossed guys and fingers crossed for Brona that Justin doesn't win a five percent share because then she'll not, she'll not have to listen to him the way I do. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm not going to win it. Don't you worry. I'm not going to win it. That wouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't be your that wouldn't be legit. I think we'd have a barrister from <laughs> more involved in that one. Uh, that would be the sort of thing. Oh, Br Br Brim Lemons in Belfast. Uh, there you go, Good. Brim. So Good you're, you're in Belfast. Comment, like, and share. Tag your friends. If your whiskey friends, tag yeah. us. It, it, it helps. Uh, you must be new. I haven't heard that name before. Have you? No. He's maybe in disguise. Incognito. Oh no, no. If we if we catch you on have multiple accounts to try and get it all for yourself. <laughs> no, Justin, we don't buy we don't buy like six some other people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that. I know that. I know that. I know. I know. Uh, there you go. The chin school is oh. a great day out. Yes, you don't you don't have to do it now. You can do it at some time. It's going ballistic at the minute. I can't keep up with all the comments. There you go. Uh -huh. Frank Hearn is saying a wee tasting would be nice. Please send me one. Oh yes, you don't have to. You don't have to beg. You don't. You don't have to beg. All you have to do is comment. <laughs> Like and share and tell your friends, you know. Uh, no, Brona, Brona's a lovely girl. Um, hopefully, hopefully, she gets the raffle sorted out, and the, the people that um, people that she says I'm in business with are, are pleasant and nice, and uh, everything goes well for her. But no, congratulations again. Now, uh, oh, he's a Keith Lemon. I'm a Lemon from Balamina. Got to keep it incognito. Ah, right, right, right. Do you maybe you maybe do know him? Do you know? Is it like lemon? Totally like guess. There's there's a big family of lemons in Balamina. Like there's, I mean, when I say a big family, I mean hundreds of them, and they're all one family. So, I I I I, I grew up with some of the lemons. So. Peter Stewart moved from YouTube to Facebook to be able to share. No, uh, if you below the faith, Facebook thing, there's a little thing that, that says that says share as well there too. You can share from YouTube or Facebook or copy and paste the link. Just help spread the word about it. Helps us help you. The more popular we get, the bigger the deals are going to get. Isn't that right, Marty? That's it. And we don't forget our fans, Justin. We don't forget our fans. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, is he now, the elder lemon? I don't know. <laughs> there's, but like I said, there's, there's a huge family of lemons. So there is. Now, Justin, I'm going to do this on your behalf, really. Um, right. What, what? These, re these ready to drink things. We've decided that we would have a wee rip up one of these on your behalf. You know, I'm not a big fan of these cocktaily stuff. But I thought what we'll do is we'll go with. Everybody's favourite little little distillery or cologne. Yes. And this this is blackberry bramble seltzer. Now, it's a like, it's a hundred percent vegan. I like these sort of things. It's a, it's a, a weirdly textured yeah. can. It's, it's I don't know what it is. It's 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 it doesn't feel like a normal can. Maybe can you can you see that in my camera while it focus in? It's there's like texture to the can. Yeah. Look at that there. I actually feel it's quite nice. Now, it's a refreshing spritz of blackberry and gin. Not a huge gin -y person. Distilled with carefully selective native botanicals from the heart of the Mourne Mountains in County Down, where old traditions and the finest natural resources are blended to produce world-class craft spirits. 1.3 units, Marty, and it doesn't feel like it. 5% ABV. Okay, right. Now I'm going to give this a go. I haven't tasted this before, Justin. Oh, fuck. Um, now, as somebody that likes stout and whiskey, this this is Justin's area of expertise. John Dunn saying, "Don't do it, Marty." I may turn to the dark side here. Uh, Robert Gustafson saying, don't turn to the dark side. Those are dangerous and hot days, I can tell you. They are. Now, I've been drinking that all night because it's quite warm here. Uh, heating's on uh, and it's hot. But that is a very refreshing drink. I like the understated black blackberry. I didn't even know there was gin in it until you said because I hadn't read the thing. Uh, that is beautiful and it certainly is refreshing. 
It wouldn't be my cup of tea, Justin, if I'm totally honest. Um, too, uh, well, is, it, is it too much of a cocktail? It's not a cocktail. It's a very pleasant drink. It's very, very inoffensive. Beautiful colour too. It's like pinky. You can't really see that because of my brown uh, t-shirt and brown. Uh, it's pinky in colour. You can't yeah. see it pinky. I think it's beautiful. It, it's all right. Um, I'm not a Jan fan, so I can't. I can't really say a huge amount about it, but it's it's it doesn't taste very alcoholy, if I'm honest. Hey, but that's that's a good. I, I I like a drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic to be a good drink, you know. No, but <laughs> no, it's 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 all right. It's relatively inoffensive. Um, I just, right. I just I just wouldn't buy that. I just it's definitely not something I would buy. That's the okay, we've been asked a quest question. Graham Harner is saying, uh, Mike, M Michael, uh, Michael, is it M M Macy, Jack, Lisa, maybe Polish? He's saying, What is a salsa? Now, what is a salsa? It's basically just a lemonade, it's something we we, we fizz on it, is it not? I there's maybe a technical difference. The definition is sparkling water, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. It's just something sparkly, yeah. Um, um uh, and in 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 uh, in Polish, uh, it it would be something like Bertsy hard hard Bertsy would be a hard seltzer in Poland, or Fountain Craft hard seltzer. I'm trying to think. Hey, hold on a minute here. The translation in Polish is salsa is seltzer. So maybe maybe seltzer is a Polish word. It, it's it's woda sudowa. <laughs> Woda, South Korea. I love, I love the, 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 the Curry Fergus accent. You know, that, 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 would, that would clear up for, for them no end. There, there it is in Polish. This. I'm going to put it on screen. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, Tony Sillett, that's guy called Magic. Yeah, that was the guy called Magic. He's been on before. He's actually quite good, that guy. He watches the show regularly. Magic, you'll, be, you'll have to, you're in Belfast. You'll have to get your name into the hat. You've got your name into the hat because you're commenting this. That's what it is. Uh, it is that this is what it is in in Polish. It is uh, Wuda Suda Wuda. It's <laughs> South Korea. It sounds like. Listen, it's important to know if you, if you go into a, a, a Polish bar and, and you order South South Korea, you you don't want to be accused of wearing a dress in a week's time. All right. <laughs> Like Tony Sillis says, <laughs> wouldn't be a good idea. Now, listen, we've got seven minutes left tonight. Remember to comment, like, and share uh, if you want to enter, uh, enter the competition. We're going to try tonight the Kaloan Dark Rum Mojito Seltzer. Now, this, Wait, this, 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 might be more, this might be more up my street. Probably not. But again, this is a Dark Rum Mojito Seltzer with Cologne Small Batch Rum, which we've tried, and, well, that's superb. Finest sugar and black strap molasses gathered from around the world and distilled in County Down, where old traditions and things like. So it's 5%, 25 ml can, 1.3 units. Okey doke. Again, Ooh. we all know, we all know I'm not a cocktaily man. Wow. That's 1.3 units. 1.3 units. That's beautiful. I got a lovely. I must tell Brent and I got a lovely mint aroma off that when I was when I was opening it and actually it near ruined the keyboard again. Hmm, that is beautiful stuff. Now the one thing I do say, I do like a bit of fizz. So I, I, I do like a bit of fizz whenever I'm drinking. Nothing that's refreshing. And this is probably not the ideal time to be drinking these. Okay, we're fully aware of that, but. Um, Oh, oh so, sorry, Magic. He says it sounds German and I'm Polish. Das ist weil ich spreche ganz gut Deutsch, Magic. All right. So sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm not very good. I'm not very good. Actually, when I was in po when I was in Poland, I got trolled off for talking to German people in the little cafe we used to go to for breakfast. Uh, but anyway, uh, be be a good mixer with gin, and there's a reason for that because in every street corner in Poland, there's a little memorial to people that were murdered by the Nazis. So it isn't. It's quite understandable. Okay, there you go, Magic. You get it good. You got it. You understood it. That's not not too bad. I'm very good at making myself understood in foreign countries because I'm fat and people just put the food down in front of me and say, <laughs> there, there you are. Sounds terrible. I'm going to have to go on a diet. Um, but there you go. Everybody's laughing. Uh, it's a good mixer with Jen. It would be a good mixer with Jen, Shane. It would be. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, there's 10 in it already. 
<laughs> so, so you don't need, so that's, but, you, but you cannot taste the gin in either of these, and you cannot taste the dark rum in this either at all. Nah, that's oh, not there is me. mint in it. There is mint. There's lime in, yeah. in this one. No, it's, a, it's a mojito. Yeah. So that's oh, what that's, it is. Yeah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. You think? Well, yeah, I do. I think that's. I think that. I think that's fantastic. I think. Yeah. I think. I think that's. Uh, listen, you've got to innovate. You can't st stand still. You uh, cannot. You like cannot I, stand still. Uh, listen, we love. We love color one. Uh, everybody loves color one. That's just not for me. I'm afraid. But that's it. That's, you know, that's the, that, you can't please everybody. Okay. But that's just not for me. Um, yeah, that, that that that's your kind of thing. I personally, I'll stick with the state. Um, yeah. All right. Listen, thanks everybody for comment, like, and sharing this week. There's uh, Michael Linus saying hello. If we missed you out, always remember uh, there's that many messages coming. They all don't make it to the screen, especially if I can't decipher what they mean. So always sort of put your name and in, turn in it. There's Michael Matthews saying it's a Dell Boy drink. Brendan, uh, you, you, you're, <laughs> I thought he was more a trigger than a Dell Boy. No, <laughs> Brendan's more a trigger. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bre Bre Brendan's more a Boise, I think, than, a, than anybody. All right, yeah. But no, as I say, uh, those those would be nice for people that like cocktails. A few ice cubes on a nice warm day, they'd be good down a treat, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, but no, um, I'll stick with the stout. Justin, that's your, that's your area of expertise there, son. You know what I'm going to have with us the minute we go off air? Crisps. Correct, Amondo. <laughs> I've got vegetable crisps, and they're sitting out there on the balcony, balcony for, for me. And I'm going to look out over Belfast Loch and enjoy yeah. like this. All I'm, I'm going to go and celebrate England having won three or four World Cups there this evening, two or three pole championships, whatever the the, the World Series of baseball, the whole hate the night. I, I I do not want to mention the England results because uh, we will never hear the end of it if if they win. Uh, uh, well, they're into the semi-finals now, aren't they? Yeah. I I done two tours the other day, and it was all English people on both of them. And I had to say to them, guys, I don't mind the English football team. I don't mind them. They're nice enough guys. They come across quite well, and they seem to be trying their best. But when you go back home to England, please write a petition to Gary Lineker and all them other guys. Please just get them to stop. Please get them to stop. Well, uh, the final score was uh, four four nil. Four nil. Yeah, four, four nil. nil yeah. I actually seen uh, in the half turnaround because we have to do a bit before this. I seen the, the last goal and the, then the second goal, and it was pretty good. But the Ukraine looked like to give up, you know. So this is a spoiler for you. If you're going to watch it later, a match of the day or in plus one, uh, there it is. Ukraine uh, zero, uh, England four. Yes, and uh, uh, the full time. No, no, there was no penalties at the end of it, was there? I don't think there was. No. Oh, is that, they, don't, they don't need penalties whenever England's won for now. No, I know, I know that. They've kind, know. Of, they've kind of done that. They've kind of, they kind of made sure that's done. Um, Finals uh, on the 11th of July. There's magic. Uh, have a good one. Yeah, slaunch it. Thank you to you. Uh, the English have won it what, before the Euros even started, as always. Yes. Uh, but no, the, the players don't go on like that. The players come on and they're quite rational and thoughtful and they say, you know, we tried our bit, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's the commentators. Most of the commentators bang on about 1966. They weren't even born. Some of them, their dads weren't even born, and they still bang on about it. Hold on. I thought we have done this one. Peter Stewart's asking, will you be doing a review of the Bushmills finished in America? Oh, coming out this month. What, what, what one did we do? Well, we didn't do the American Oak. We've done the Caribbean. Rum it was in the Caribbean rum, yes. Yeah, we, yeah, might, yeah. we might do. We'll try and see. Thanks for asking, Peter. I'll try uh, and get... Uh, so we'll try and see if we can get a review done. I, I've been lacking in reviews, but I've been working. I've been doing a bit of pieces. Uh, to, but if you do see the next reviews coming up, um, do comment on them on YouTube because I really do appreciate it. Thanks very much, everybody. And remember, if you want to go on a trip, it's buy me a coffee slash Irish whiskey and uh, sign up to become a film member. There will be a trip. I can assure you there will be a trip. It's just, we've been even looking at a trip further afield, but it's just one of those things. It's COVID. Just, it's not enjoyable wearing a mask all the time. And it's really, it's really not enjoyable taking down a half empty.